Jane and Sancho saga is about to end. Cue the music for Ten Hag. Did a later did it. Did it did he's partying tonight. Sancho, one of the biggest problems in Ten Hag's era at Manchester United is about to come to an end. Dortmund in deep conversation with Manchester United. That has just broken late this afternoon. We've got an update on the next biggest thing. He is big as well, six foot three. The next biggest thing coming from Italy. Centre back Scalvini. Apparently top target for Manchester United. But how can Manchester United afford a player like that that's rumoured to be 40 to 45 million to bring into Manchester United when apparently we're on a shoestring budget. I've come up with another idea. I've got another Adam Masterclass incoming. Tune in, get your comments in the chat right now. But first of all, before you even think about commenting, you sneaky lots, he's loads you in the chat right now. Why have you not liked the video? And if you have just tuned in, I'm sure you can hit that subscribe button as well and the bell notification. This is Forever United TV. Welcome along, everyone. It's your transfer update again. I was just on top of the league a moment ago and all I could see was ping, 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 ping notifications. Everyone has Twitter turned on. Everyone has their favourite journalist around January and the summer transfer markets all tuned on because you want that notification of any breaking news. <coughs> Literally every single journalist. So I'm talking about the rest of the Premier League and it's United, 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 all the way down in the notification bar. It's just gone crazy town on Manchester United right now. And yes, January is here. January sales we were talking about this morning. I poo-pooed that idea. I did not like that one bit. Some of the names that I was coming up with within that as a counter to them big old guns that used to be it that aren't anymore i've started to come into the chat as well but starting this evening off take a deep breath adam <clears throat> clear the throat a uh, mr Jaden sancho is about to walk out of the door at manchester united and head back over to borussia dortmund according to all sources that is Sancho now in deep communication with Dortmund. That is his preferred choice of where he would like to leave Manchester United. It has been accepted by United over the coming, sorry, over the past few weeks that Jaden Sancho had to leave. The exile is over and it has ended with a move away, as it would seem. Now, obviously, this is going to be a little bit more complex to, say, a Donny van der Beek sort of loan deal to, to, to Frankfurt because... There is a big, big wage being discussed here. And how much of that are Dortmund going to cover? This, I think, is where this one is going to drag out a little bit. I don't think Jaden Sancho is on a plane this week to Dortmund, put it that way. Conversations have restarted. Fabrizio Romano, David Ornstein, everyone who is anyone in the football media world has been all over this this afternoon and it is definitely happening. There is movement now that Jaden Sancho is on his way. And like I said... There goes your party popper for Ten Hag. One big, big problem walking out of the door. That man's presence is no longer. He's been doing the Chatham Offensive. We've seen social media about him signing autographs for young fans outside Carrington. Brilliant stuff. All good and well. Fantastic for him. And that's what he should be doing as a basic, as a United player off the pitch. He conducted himself in a reasonably reasonable fashion I think it will be through strict orders from Manchester United over the last few weeks we've not heard anything untoward I can't remember anything bad since the night he was playing PlayStation while United were playing uh, Bayern Munich in the Champions League <clears throat> I'd have thought that was bad some people didn't but hey everyone's different everyone's got their opinions but James Sancho the biggest thing out of all of this is there is a big big issue at Manchester United which is walking away now, it's only short term, and this is revisited, obviously. And that's why I've put the poll up in the chat right now for you guys. Who will last longer at Manchester United? Ten Hag or Jadon Sancho? Now, think about it. Everyone has gone gun hole straight away because Sancho's walking out on a loan period. Don't forget, he's got to come back. And Ten Hag has to deal with new ownership. And in this situation right now... Yes, it sounds good and looks good for Ten Hag. And is more proof that the ownership coming in in Sir Jim Radcliffe and Ineos are backing the manager because Sancho being shoved out straight away in the first week of the transfer window is Ineos backing Ten Hag on this one. There's not even been a conversation about can we make this work, it would seem. Sir Jim Radcliffe's been in today. 
I don't know if he's spoken to Ten Hag today. We've seen pictures. Uh, they've come out in the sun today. They're over social media of uh, Sir Jim Meckler's visit to Old Trafford today. I have no idea if he's spoken to Ten Hag yet or not. But if he has done and this news has come out today, everyone's going to be putting two and two together. First point, uh, first meeting, first important point from that meeting, playing staff, what's going on, <clears throat> where are we at? Well, yes, of course, we need to get rid of Jadon Sancho. He has to go. It doesn't even look like a conversation has been had regarding Sancho. This is how bad the situation is. If any new ownership coming in, seeing a prospect like Jadon Sancho, which he is, we know he's got qualities, could enhance Manchester United's chances on the pitch. If he was playing well, yes, he would. Probably better than what Anthony is right now. There has to have been a complete meltdown a complete fallout, and it's gone beyond the point of return now. For Ineos to come in within a week, not even entertain the thought of Jadon Sancho being brought back in or a discussion being had or maybe getting both parties together to see if we can iron this out. As I said, that 3% less have gone with Ten Hag in the chat. <laughs> I'm not influencing you whatsoever, people, 4%. It's going up and up and up, but... <laughs> You only have to talk about something slightly the opposite way. And everyone just starts going, oh, hang on a minute, actually. I might have jumped the gun a little bit there. There is point behind this. But, yeah, uh, like I just said then, for any has to come in, eh, literally a week, and Jaden Sancho is walking out the door, discussions are being had. That, for me, is <clears throat> full backing from Sir Jim Radcliffe for Eric Ten Hag and the first big, big call made. That's done, that's put aside. The negotiation factor and what's going on with Jaden Sancho is going to take a little bit of time. It is uh, over 100 likes in the chat already, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, love that. We got off to a fast start today. Before, I think it was around about five minutes, we actually hit that mark. Great stuff. Love it. But yes, uh, I feel like the negotiation side of Jaden Sancho, that's going to take a different, different length of time altogether. That is going to be one of full on, how much do you want to pay? How much do you want to contribute to his wages? Jaden Sancho, I feel, will happily just go as long as he's getting the same money. And I think this is now going to be a problem between United and Dortmund on what we do. Sancho is all too willing to go. Ten Hag all too willing to let him go. And now Manchester United have a new transfer set up. They have new people in charge of what is going on at United. So it's right into the melting pot for Ineos right now because they have to now negotiate a stupid wage which Ed Woodward has laid out for Sancho and try and negotiate with a club that has had Jaden Sancho before on minimal wages. Gone to United played absolutely crap on stupid wages. They're just going to go, we'll take him off your hands. If you want that problem gone, then fair enough, but we ain't going anywhere near what some you want covering for his wages. So problem number one here straight away, is, and like Sir David Brailsford and Jim Radcliffe, this is an ongoing process right now of how Manchester United run, auditing basically is going on. They've been thrown right in at the deep end here, and they're going to find out how Manchester United have been run because they are now going to have to negotiate this contract with Borussia Dortmund and Jadon Sancho's wages. So they're going to come right here and go, I know exactly how this place is being run. What an absolute joke this is. You've got a player who's not even contributing to anything that has been the demise of this team this season on 300 grand a week. And you've got Dortmund who are run on a shoestring budget who give nothing away. And you want to negotiate with them? Thanks very much, guys. Welcome to Manchester United. There you go. <laughs> a gifted membership from Mark, LFC UK. Thank you very much. Christopher Hooper has taken that membership. Welcome to the Members Club, my friend. Hope you're doing well. <clears throat> yes. Take a breath of it, because even I'm... the way as, as I'm talking right now, and it just comes into my head, this is what happens with me. I start talking and then I start realising things as I'm talking and I'm telling you as I'm finding out in my own head myself about what issue is coming about right now with Jane and Sancho and Sir Jim Radcliffe. When you look at it like we have just done then, you go, Phew, it's not going to take long to audit this setup here because there are also rumours that have come out tonight as well regarding Manchester United and what, and what Ineos wants. And a really, really good... Uh, I've seen a really good tweet from the Muppeteers 
uh, come out. I'm just going to bring it up now and read it to you guys, actually, because this is really interesting. Uh, so the first one was United Muppeteers said that because they know a lot of what's going on from the American side of things. Uh, I want to refer to this now. There's an article from Rob Dawson at ESPN uh, today uh, that slid a bit under the radar. This is a point of contention. Ineos are not bringing in guys like Ashworth and Mitchell for them to not run the show. They don't believe current agreements work. So what they're saying there is that... Ineos already know that Manchester United aren't running properly. That's why they're bringing in Ashworth, Jean-Claude Blanc and Paul Mitchell. That's why they're bringing them in. Going down there, the next comment underneath is, the only thing I will say on Ten Hag it, it, <clears throat> is it would be important for him to accept the role that is presented in order to have a future at the club, which is likely to be diminished and have more direction from people above him. Well said, well put, and yes, very, very true. I completely agree with every single word of that. And like what Rob said there and what the Muppeteers said there, that is 100% bang on the money. Ineos are already in situ at Manchester United. They're already organising people to come in, so they are going to change it. Anyone at United who wants a job is going to have to accept that change or you are out of the door. Ten Hag right now has just had backing from Ineos in the Sancho situation like we just spoke about then. Anyone above Ten Hag who dealt with the Jaden Sancho uh, transfer is probably worrying for their jobs right now. Because obviously Sir Jim Radcliffe has come in. His people are going to be now discussing how they rectify the Sancho issue how they split them wages, who pays what, how much of the wages the Dortmund have to pay and what are Manchester United paying for basically nothing. Jason Sancho, we've been paying fortunes for and he's contributed nothing. We're about to take a little bit of that away. How much can Ineos and their sporting control make happen for Manchester United's balance sheets? Because this is all going against us when it comes to financial fair play as well. Let's not forget this. So let's see what Ineos are made of, in other words, and very interesting. But the biggest thing in that was, and like I said, from what Rob said there right now, uh, DJ John with a super chat, sorry, I was supposed to bring that up then, uh, Eric Ten Hag in, but if Eric Ten Hag gets rid of Varane, I'm Eric Ten Hag out. Fair enough. That is your point there, that is your angle. Uh, I'm not going to argue with that. Thanks for the super chat, my man. Hope you're well, hope you're warm in Sweden. But yeah, so... Dan Ashworth, Paul Mitchell, Jean-Claude Blanc, all these people coming in are to make Manchester United run better. Ten Hag is not going to be managing below him. He's not going to be managing above him like he has been. His whole tenure at Manchester United, he is going to have one sole job, and that is to report to the recruitment team and the football team, i.e. the way that Ineos are running their sporting control. He now has people to report to. He has targets he's probably going to have to meet. He has an awful lot to impress, a lot of people to impress right now because what he's doing on the pitch obviously is not working. They've backed him with Jadon Sancho, so straight away the pressure has just been heaped up on Ten Hag. And that poll that I put up there, let's see how many people have over 300 votes in that poll already. Who will be at Manchester United longer, Ten Hag or Jadon Sancho? 75% say Ten Hag. What if it all goes wrong in these four months and Jadon Sancho comes back? There's a new manager in situ. British core of players. Remember that conversation? Ten Hag has to make this season work. What are, and this will be the big one, we're never going to know this, but the single biggest question out of everything that's going on with Ineos, the discussions, the audit and everything at Old Trafford, Carrington right now, the one question, the biggest question out of everything is, what are Ineos' targets for Ten Hag from now until the end of the season. That is the single most important part of all of this 25% takeover. This is the ultimate right now. Ten Hag will be set a target. He has to be. Because Ineos will be running Manchester United on a shoestring budget, going off what's been said so far. Unless, and I'm going to discuss this before the end of the show, there is something else that happens. I'll get onto that. Uh, a little bit later in the show. But right now, Ten Hag is going to be set goals 
I feel like he has to impress with his vision. I think Ineos will work alongside Ten Hag with his vision, but parts of that and the control of Ten Hag are going to be taken away. If they come in and do what they've just done, completely back him, out you go, Sancho, then, bang, Eric, you've got a lot to prove. Because already, they're right behind you and they're going to want to see what you've got. So that is the biggest thing in all of this. It's not just Sancho going, that's great stuff. That's all the glitz and glamour side of things. But behind the scenes, right now, Ten Hag is on the front, happy. But behind the scenes, he's probably shitting a brick, isn't he? Let's be honest. He's seen all this change <laughs> he's seen all this change above him, and he's now sat at home going, right, okay, uh, my complete job and everything at Manchester United has just changed. That's the biggest news to come out of this Jaden Sancho story today. That is the single biggest. Obviously, in terms of Sancho himself and what this means for him, hopefully, from a player side of things, hopefully this all works out for him and he becomes, uh, sorry, he refines that player. It's like someone said in the chat the other day, even while he was at Dortmund, he had to bunk up with Haaland just to make sure that Haaland woke up and got him to training ground on time. We heard what Matic said regarding Sancho. He was the one that was always late. Walking out of training with Pep Guardiola. Club after club after club. Everyone has said the same thing. He now, he now needs to go away, take a good long look at himself and decide what he wants to do with the rest of his football career. Because this is it. No one is ever going to pay him what he's on right now. Make your mind up, Jaden, what you want to do and where you want to go with your career. And that's just a message from all United fans. It's not worked at United. Maybe if he goes away and refines that Jaden Sancho form that had him up there in the stats, in the top of the stat columns in all European football for, I think, three seasons in a row, the reason that Haaland was so gutted when he left Dortmund, if he refines really that, then we've got options and we've got possibilities again with Jaden Sancho. And you know what? I really hope that he turns his career around. I don't like to see any player completely fall off the radar. We don't want another Jesse Lingard situation with Jaden Sancho because this can really affect uh, the mental health of players as well. And we have to bring this up. It's all right being one-sided as fans and saying, and I'm one of them. I just don't like Jaden Sancho. I don't like his attitude. I don't like what he is now. But there's always room for players to change. There's always room to have your uh, opinion changed and you look at it from a different side and you can understand a little bit more we're never going to know what went on behind the scenes but all i've done is just researched what has happened with Jaden sancho in the past everything that he's done at other clubs why he's not being picked for england anymore it all just falls down into the same conversation which is Jaden sancho is not wanted because he has got problems he's got a bad attitude the best we've seen of sancho has been at dortmund in his whole career hopefully the man we finds that form and we see the Jaden Sancho of old. And you know what? He's still a United player. He'll still be a United player come the summer. So let's just take it from there, I say. Nick Savage in with a super chat. His first super chat. Nick, thank you very much. Sancho has shown his true colours. No matter who the manager is, he cannot be allowed back. He has taken us all for a mugs. All for mugs. I thought he was going to say for a ride then. So thank you for the super chats, Nick. Uh... Great comment, actually. Yes, that's how a lot of United fans feel right now. Jaden Sancho has taken us for a ride. He's taken us for a mug. And he's still a living at Manchester United. Go away, Jaden. Find that form. Go and rediscover yourself at Dortmund. And maybe a conversation can be had later down the line. Whether it will be with Ten Hag, we do not know. We just had that discussion then with where everything is actually at right now with Ten Hag and Ineos. Only time will tell. This is going to be one hell of a running to the end of the season because at the end of it, there's going to be some massive, massive decisions that need to be had. And someone's going to have to make some seriously big calls. Already 200 likes in the chat. Thank you very much, everybody. Just over 800 in the room with us right now. Do give the video a like, guys. And if you are tuning in for the first time, obviously, please do hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. It is very important. It does help the channel and helps us move forward. Loads of content and loads of new stuff coming up, guys, by the way. So uh, you will not be disappointed. You will not. <clears throat> Moving on. I said it. Manchester United at the top of this show are somehow 
Looking at the next biggest prospect coming out of Italy, Giorgio Scalvini, a young, big centre-back who is definitely making his mark in Serie A right now at Atalanta. We talked uh, earlier on today uh, regarding another centre, another centre back that Spurs are now apparently in for, and this is where this whole twist comes about. So Radu uh, Dragusin is now apparently we're expecting a bid from Spurs for him. That was a Genoa, a Romanian centre back who also plays obviously in Serie A. Another up and coming player, twenty one. Uh, he is. He is now being touted by Spurs. Uh, now United have been interested in. They have looked at. Uh, Ragusson, and they have got scouts actually scouting him as well. But you have to look at the situation now where it is. And Fabrizio Romano came out today saying Spurs are also in uh, for him. But that's simply because Jean-Claude Tadebo has gone completely dead for Spurs. So now you start thinking, right, Tadebo is not leaving for Spurs. Does that then bring Manchester United back into the fray for Tadebo? Well, we're hearing today that... Uh, Giorgio Scalvini is Manchester United's top target. In fact, Manchester United are ahead of Real Madrid in the fight for the young Italian signature. He's played for Italy. He's had seven caps there. He's come through the youth ranks uh, of Atalanta. He's been there pretty much his whole career. So it is going to take a significant bid, but a bid of around £45 million would apparently be enough to get Scalvini over to Old Trafford. Now, I know what you're going to say straight away, uh, and that is, how the hell are Manchester United affording Scalvini? And that is a question I cannot complete, I cannot honestly answer. I can only summarise and guess, really. I can only sort of figure out how we're going to do it. We've obviously spoke about the possibilities before of a Casemiro leaving, of a Rafael Varane leaving. This could be where we're going with this. And that's how we're going to make money for these signings. But one thing I did think about, and this is what I was getting at early on in the show, how I feel like Sir Jim Radcliffe could actually make a difference at Manchester United. Now, through the whole time that the Glazers have been at Manchester United, uh, they haven't invested anything of their own money. Everyone knows that. All they've done is taken out the biggest cash machine in sporting history. That is the Glazers and Manchester United. Now, financial fair play has come in towards the back end of the Glazers' ownership of Manchester United. And this is where we've started to see issues. So, Manchester United balancing their books has been very difficult because within financial fair play rules and the Premier League, fit, uh, not fit and proper person, the Premier League sustainability uh, profitability and sustainability rules and regs, the ones that Everton have just been done by, in there, there is, <clears throat> there is, well, it's not so much a clause, but there is something that the owners can actually do. So they can offset some of the loss or some of the negative, or the, the red, as you would say, uh, of a balance sheet of the football club by investing their own money. They're allowed to pump in some of their own money to balance only a certain amount. But if that is enough to bring them under, the Premier League and I think UEFA are both in on this one, that uh, owners can put in a certain amount that balances the sheets a little bit. We've not had that through our whole time with the Glazers. 20-odd years of the Glazers have not invested nothing. So we've always struggled. And when people say, why are Manchester United always struggling with financial fair play, where others like Chelsea and Arsenal and Liverpool and all these get around it? Well, we don't actually know, but I'm guessing that some of these owners actually do invest into their football clubs. You only have to look at that famous graph that does the rounds near enough every single transfer window of the amount of money owners put into clubs and the amount of money that are taken out. Manchester United are bottom of the league when it comes to what owners have put in and the top of the league when it comes to the amount of money the owners have taken out. So zilch. Now, this is where it differs. And this may not be possible, but I am spitballing again. I'm doing an Adam moment. If Sir Jim Radcliffe does have part ownership of Manchester United and he can invest into Manchester United, can Sir Jim Radcliffe balance any of Manchester United's books with a small investment into the playing staff side of things. That's where I'm looking at and that I feel is something that probably needs to be 
discussed or looked into more than anything. I feel like Sir Jim Radcliffe can actually do a little bit more than what he's doing. Is he willing to? That's the thing. If he does, then you could see a Scalvini coming into Manchester United. He is the next best thing coming out of Italy by all accounts. Real Madrid all over him. There's a lot of clubs all over and in for Scalvini. He is hot property right now. And young, tall, strong, pulling up trees in Syria, proper, proper defender. Again, like we said this morning on the morning show, the debate regarding is he going to fit into Manchester United? The Premier League is a big step up. Is it doable? We don't know. All of this is all of this is up in the air. We just don't have a clue how these players are going to come into Manchester United, how they're going to react to the Premier League and what's going to happen. But all you can do is scout these players out. There's been numerous players being linked with Manchester United already in the first couple of days. None of them are big, big names. None of them are massive names. And this is the way, like we've said before, many of shows and our conversations have gone down this road of Manchester United have to look, not so much in bargain basement, but we have to look at what we can afford and what we can develop. They're the interesting bits with Manchester United. They're what we need to be looking at. And at the end of the day, it's the only way United are going to start balancing their books. And it's the only way Ineos can actually move United forward. So, yeah, that was just my sort of angle on that and how we could actually sort of offset some of the losses. Uh, so Jim Radcliffe can obviously invest into Manchester United. So it is it is a possibility. It is a very, very big possibility that this uh, is a way around it for Sir Jim Radcliffe and Ineos. But the big things from the start of the show to the middle of the show where we are right now, Jadon Sancho, that decision for Dortmund now fully in conversation with Manchester United regarding that. So Dortmund are in communication with Ineos because they're now dealing with all the transfer matters. Very, very interesting. Ineos, they effectively are back in Ten Hag because Sancho is out the door and it's a player that Ten Hag doesn't want. He is an asset, a young player, a young British player that has clearly got talent. But Ineos are back in Ten Hag on this one and are accepting negotiations with Dortmund and we could see Jadon Sancho out of the door of Manchester United this month, which is what everyone I feel feels is best for both parties and Ten Hag. Does it help Ten Hag moving forward this season? No, that's the other side of that deal. Now that Ineos have backed Ten Hag, what is he going to say to their new structure? Because like Rob Dawson from ESPN said, they're bringing in Ashworth and Mitchell and Jean-Claude Blanc because the system that's in there now does not work. A conversation will be had with Ten Hag about what he has to accept and his new role at Manchester United. It will have diminished from what he's had before. He won't have the same power. He'll be communicating and reporting to different people, i.e. the structure of Ineos and what comes in. And he won't have as big a say on transfers and any players coming in or out of the football club. He will obviously talk and communicate like he has done with Sancho, and that play is not working, out the door they go. The new structure regarding the termination of contracts and what we're doing with these one-year extension things that we've been talking about all week. But the big thing from that is the pressure now that's heaped on Ten Hag. It's like, right, we've backed you, we've got rid of this bad egg as such in Jadon Sancho. Now you need to prove to us that you can take this team forward, and we will be in control of what happens above you and below you. You concentrate solely on getting this team working and making Manchester United what they once was. That's the whole target for Sir Jim Radcliffe. And they will not think twice. Someone put a chat up before the stream actually came on and said, look what Ineos have done. They've sacked five managers in Nice since they came in and took control. They're not scared of sacking managers. They're not scared of making big, big decisions. Ten Hag will have to fit in with Jean-Claude Blanc, with Mitchell, with Ashworth. Not the opposite. They don't have to fit in with him. This isn't what it used to be at United. The manager doesn't have the final say anymore. The days of Sir Alex Ferguson saying the manager is the most important person at this football club. Yes, he is when Sir Alex Ferguson is there because Sir Alex Ferguson was an absolute legend and a miracle worker. And he had the clout. Right now, that doesn't that doesn't count. 
The biggest problem we had when Sir Alex Ferguson left was that statement, back the manager, back the manager. That's all he got all the way through his time at Manchester United. He had Sir Bobby Charlton behind him. He had all of uh, <clears throat> the likes of uh, Martin Edwards and, think, and people like that. And then David Gill later down the line, all behind him because he was successful. It's easy to say these things when you're successful, but it's not the same when your team is faltering and results are not working for you. You cannot carry on that way. Times have changed and now it's about structure. It's about organisation, full-on planning. The manager has a role, but it is no longer the biggest role at the football club. He isn't the biggest voice. This is how the game has changed. United need to be, oh, need to act like an actual football club, a modern-day football club. Is Ten Hag ready for what's about to come? We are about to find out. We are 55 away from 35,000 subscribers, everybody. So please, please, if you are tuning in, do hit that subscribe button. Make sure you give the video a like. We've just gone over 300, right on the half hour mark as well. That's perfect timing. Uh, yes, so absolutely brilliant stuff as always, guys. Thank you for liking the video. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks for getting your comments in. I've gone on for a good half an hour there now, guys. So I want to get into some of the comments. So please start getting... Uh, your questions in on everything that we've discussed there or anything else that you want to discuss as well. Uh, there was an interesting sort of uh, tweet that came out earlier on regarding Bruno Fernandes handing out presents to the staff. I don't know if you guys seen that uh, for all their hard work. The staff at United are miracle workers for what they do. On low, low wages, uh, the budget wages that they're on, the amount of sacrifice that they go through, uh, losing time with families, everything like that. It is a hard, hard job working at Manchester. I've seen it firsthand. I've seen what they do. I've talked to them behind the scenes. It's not an easy place to work. The expectation, and they live it. And a lot of them people behind the scenes at Manchester United are also United fans. But they can't say anything or react or be that fan that they want to be at times. So... Yeah, I think it's only right that the players look after these staff members and they do make the effort around these sort of Christmas time periods, the holiday period, to actually go that little bit extra yard. Uh, Dobby is free. It says, Ineos uh, would have gotten rid of Sancho regardless of who the manager is. We don't know. We don't know. San Sancho moving, uh, that's the plus uh, this, at this moment bit of positivity. I said we'd bring it this evening, guys. I said we'd get there. Uh, you would think the Glazers would have put in uh, some of the rap money they got. Disgraceful. Oh, no, Daryl. You definitely would not think that. <laughs> if the Glazers got any money, that would not go back into Manchester United. Let's not forget, this is the Glazers' own money now that's been invested by Sir Jim Radcliffe. There is no reason at all for them to reinvest any money back into Manchester United. That would never happen. I just talked about the table and the charts of how much money the Glazers have taken out compared to put to putting in and where we are at both ends of the table. Investment terms, we are bottom. Money taken out, we are top. That's the Glazers. Any money that they get in for anyone coming into Manchester United would definitely go straight into the Glazers' pockets. Uh, so close to a 1,000 in the chat and 300 likes. Oh, we've already passed the 300 likes. But yeah, do share the video as well, guys. Let's get more people in the chat as well. Let's see if we can get over a 1,000 in the room. That would be uh, that would be a, that would be nice. Let's just say that. <laughs> Eric Ten Hag has limited power before this deal. It's going to be the end of him at this club. Look at how Mike Ashley forced out so many players and managers at Newcastle. We're about to find out. Is what I'll say there, Dobe. Grey 100, uh, kick the living daylights out of the like tab, guys. Uh, do it for the channel to grow and make ads a happy chap here with two beers. I like that chap. I like it. Gareth Osborne, Adam Ineos said, all January targets will go ahead. Uh, they won't be taking control of that till the summer. No, that's not true. Uh, Ineos will be, <clears throat> if there is any targets... It will be discussed with Ineos, but obviously Manchester United haven't got any incoming targets. Everything that has been organised is in the out column. And it all depends on the out column as to what comes in. So Ineos is not like they're taking over just in the summer. Ineos right now, don't expect them to be 
spending fortunes and investing loads of money. That's right, but they are in control of everything that goes on right now. Uh, Eric Ten Lasso will not finish the season. Let's just check on the actual poll that we put up earlier on. Still the same. Coming up, uh, let's see if we can get a 1,000 votes on this poll as well, guys. So get voting, please, if you are just tuning in. Who will be at United longer, Ten Hag or Jadon Sancho? 75% think Ten Hag is going to last out. That means he needs to pull up trees. And like I said, the biggest thing coming out of all of any meetings between Ineos and Ten Hag right now is what targets Ineos have got for Manchester United moving forward. What do they want from Manchester United? What do they want from Ten Hag from this season? That's the biggest thing to come out of all of this. Chris says, Radcliffe won't survive asset stripping the club. Uh, look at the fans now. Wait until next season when we're floundering at the bottom of the table. Hey, if we have to fall to come back up, like I said, we have to drop expectations. We really do. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for me. I don't want to. I don't think we should have to accept that. But the reality is that Manchester United are in a position right now where I feel like we are going to drop a bit more because it's going to take time for anything that Ineos put in place to actually... Uh, come to fruition it really is only 13 away from a thousand people in the room share the video like the video share the video like the video cheers guys depends if he can sign the young <laughs> so, yeah that is a uh... god don't even it's still got shivers down my spine nightmares about that saga all that summer what a waste of time that was uh ian says uh, Miles Robinson, free agent from USA, is very talented. Uh, Hayden, uh, Hackney, Middlesbrough, middle, mid, mid, Middlesbrough midfielder, going right to the top, cost 15 million ish. Both top lads and great uh, attributes. We're searching, we're searching the globe right now for young talent. I feel like that's what it is. Look at the ages of the people that we're talking about here, like Tadebo. Look at uh, Scalvini. Look at all of these players that we talked about for Fana earlier on. There's hardly any on, not one of them is above the age of 24. This is where Manchester United's approach is going to go in regards to recruitment now. This is how we are going to hit the transfer market under Ineos and their control. We did just hit a 1,000 people in the room, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, moving forward here on FUTV, as always, just about to hit... The 35,000 subscriber mark as well, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are talking Jadon Sancho. We are talking Scalvini. We are talking Manchester United's new approach to the transfer market. What does this mean to Ten Hag and now that the club have backed him in the Jadon Sancho saga and are kicking Sancho out? Is that the right word? Should I say kicking out? Is that fair? I don't know if it's totally fair, to be honest. Uh, I think, like I said... I am aware of my opinion of Jaden Sancho, but I'm also aware that there is a player there as well that can turn his career around. And ultimately, everyone wants a player to be able to turn things around. We talked in depth many a shows about Mason Greenwood and what he's done and him coming back to Manchester United. Oh, by the way, if you didn't listen to the show earlier on in terms of Mason Greenwood and where we're at... Digging into that deal a little bit more and what Manchester United did with Getafe convinces me even more. And this was, I think, general consensus amongst the chat earlier on this morning that Mason Greenwood and Manchester United with Getafe have a a, a buy-on clause for Getafe, believe it or not, of 20%. So even if Mason Greenwood went back to Manchester United in the summer, he's away from Getafe. It was only a loan. Then if... Manchester United decided to sell Mason Greenwood. Getafe, in fact, get 20% of that, of that sale. That's what's been negotiated in. Now, I had to dig it and read it. I'm still scrutinising it now, but every time I looked at a different angle from it, it all said the same thing. United were that desperate to get rid of Mason Greenwood just to get him out of the limelight. They had to put a sweetener in the Getafe loan deal, whereas they actually made money if Manchester United sold Greenwood. Put it together, cross the T's, dot the I's, figure it out, put the pieces of the puzzle in the right positions. Manchester United will not be selling Mason Greenwood. That's what 
is a definite from that for me. That's what I take from it anyway. Manchester United cannot afford to let Mason Greenwood go. 400 likes in the bag, everybody. Thank you so much. And yes, I feel like we are moving forward right now. Big decisions made by the football club. Uh, I was talking to Kaz earlier on. Does it feel different, she said to me. She said, Danny van der Beek, bang, done. Regulon, that decision has been made as well. Regulon has gone back to Spurs. So we are going to be getting players back like Malassia and Shaw. That's a definite now. I was told that we can expect possibly Casemiro and Mount to be available for Spurs, which is a week on Sunday. So we're not far away from Casemiro and Mount. And then after that, it will be Martinez. So by the end of this month, heading into the busy period, which is February, which is stacked with fixtures, Manchester United are going to be in a much, much stronger position squad-wise. Uh, we are getting many a players back. I am just looking through a few of the headlines. Uh, it's said here from Rob Dawson, again from ESPN, Eric Ten Hag wants to retain his influence in Manchester United's recruitment decisions once Sir Jim Radcliffe's minority investment in the club is ratified. There may be trouble ahead. Paul Mitchell is being considered for the head of recruitment role at Manchester United with Dan Ashworth still number one priority as sporting director. Uh, that's what we were just talking about there. Uh, this is from uh, Peter Hall, freelance uh, journalist, uh, works for Reuters as well. Uh, so Jim Radcliffe and Ineos are considering bringing in both Ashworth and Mitchell to completely revamp how Manchester United approach the transfer market. Uh, this is all the news that's coming out. I'm just looking at pictures right now. They're all over social media of Sir Jim Radcliffe's visit to Old Trafford today. Uh, in the rain with his brother. Yep, welcome back to Manchester. It's not Monaco. It definitely is not. Uh, and yeah... Just one more, just wanted to confirm the Jaden Sancho story that was brought out by Romano earlier on as well and many other sources. Uh, more on Jaden Sancho. He's keen on Borussia Dortmund return as his uh, as he considers his option as an ideal find uh, ideal to find his best form again. Uh, Borussia Dortmund and Manchester United are now in negotiations over a loan fee and salary coverage. A loan fee. So Manchester United are looking to get money out of Dortmund. Uh, for Jaden Sancho in form of a loan fee. So, all little bits, again, little marginal gains. That is what Ineos, Sir Jim Radcliffe, Sir David Brailsford, that is what they are all about. Little bits. Uh, let's get into the chat, shall we, and see where you guys are at again. Uh, let's get Adam to a 1,000 likes, folks. We can do it, says Lee. Mm, might be a bit of an ask, but you can definitely try. Uh, they got shares in uh, KJ Jelly. Don't, oh, I don't know. That's another conversation that you guys are having. How can a manager not have any say in recruitment? It will never work. No, he does. But you've got to understand, Obi. It's not about his full say so. It's like he likes that player. So, what happens in recruit? So, for instance, how Liverpool work is Jurgen Klopp has a team of recruiters. Uh, Recruitment, well, agents, whatever, recruiters, scouts, uh, everyone in that area, sporting directors, they know exactly how. So they will have meetings of how they want to play, the profile of player that they want. Then they go out and source them. Jurgen Klopp may have liked a certain player, but his, his recruitment team basically bring to the table the players that he will choose from. So he will have a say... But he won't have a say on what players specifically they go out and look at. He may say, I like this player. Can we at least have a look at him? That's fair enough. He does have a little say. But ultimately, it isn't the manager's final say so. Uh, players are brought to the table, are discussed. And they then together figure out which is the best option. They'll go one, two, three in order. Who he likes the most to the last one, last option. Then figure out exactly how much it's going to cost, what's more cost effective, the age of the player, sell on and all of that and everything is rolled in and then you end up getting a deal. That is basically in a nutshell what the sporting directors and recruitment teams do. Uh, Lee Brown says at least say in, that would be a good signing. I do agree, I would take him. Yeah, and why not? 
getting him for nothing. Oh, another conversation. Sorry, guys. Just bought into all of these uh, private conversations you guys are having in the chats. Uh, hopefully, we will start getting loan fees for players like most clubs and stop being mugged off by other clubs. This is all part of Manchester United and our new recruitment and us <clears throat> coming to the table finally and how football clubs in the modern world are run. We have been taken to the cleaners by so many clubs in the transfer window. Loan fees, transfer fees, wages, everything. At least right now, we are not going to get absolutely slapped for these fees and wages and stuff like that. 21 away from 35,000 subscribers. Thank you very much, guys. Please keep liking and sharing the video. And yes, that is everything that makes the channel and helps the channel go forward. So please do keep liking uh, the video. Uh, Somerville from Leeds, we will get signed uh, for peanuts by Brighton. Uh, then be worth 40 million overnight. Those are the deals we should be looking at. The problem with them deals is, where I understand them, Lee, and it is annoying that United cannot find these players, the pressure of the big club, the pressure of Manchester United, that is that is the issue. It's not like we cannot go out and find these players. It's everything. And I go back to it again, and I've said this before. Sir Alex Ferguson, about three months ago, I think it was now, was saying when he was involved in Manchester United and the transfer side of things, <clears throat> he knew everything about every single player. He made sure he knew the character, more importantly. He knew everything personal life-wise for these players, who his family are, who his friends are, his history, where he's trained, where he's loaned out to. The completest. He knows absolutely everything about every single player that comes into Manchester United. I guarantee we don't. Over the last 10 years, we've not known all of that. We have just done the bare minimum. That is all Manchester United have done. Bare minimum, and that is it. Manchester United have to know everything. It is a it it's a it's a horrible job. It is a hard, hard job doing this and scouting these players and knowing. On the pitch, they could be absolute world beaters with no fans around, small crowds, they look great, composure and everything. But you walk out in front of seventy three thousand Manchester United fans with the expectations the way they are now. I mean, beforehand it was difficult, but now, when a player's brought into Manchester United now, the fans expect instant reaction. The fans think that these players are going to be the ones that turn everything around from the dismal dross that we've been watching. It is a hard, hard job being a Manchester United player. Coming in for the first time, you've seen it. This is where it's different. This is where it's different for United and other clubs like Brighton. There's not as much pressure no disrespect to how they have, they run absolutely perfectly. There is another level to that that I think United need to get to. It's not the same, but it's similar. But at United's level and expectation level, that's where United need to get to. And I think that is the biggest task for Sir Jim McCliffe and Ineos right now. I feel like that is where Manchester United are going to end up and where the fans are going to be judging uh, the new sporting control from Ineos. I think that's... That's the biggest question out there. That is where Manchester United's future lies, ultimately. That is where it lies. And it's not it's not easy. It's not going to be straightforward getting there either. Skill, talent is a given. Character, more important. Mental attitude, uh, that is it. Have you got the mentality to handle wearing that United shirt? Tony Callaghan, do people think that Mitchell and Ashworth will change the way other clubs view us? <sighs> I don't think it's about how other clubs view us. I think it's how players view Manchester United. Other players view Manchester United. That's what they need to change. Because they'll see players coming to United and their careers dying. How many players over the last 10 years can you say that Manchester United, um, well, they've been at United, their career has gone backwards? I mean, you only have to look at Donny going now. He's lost three years of his career. Uh, what happened to Lingard? He's gone off. Jaden Sancho, he's gone. Uh, Antony, it's happened to him now. 
Obviously, if Marcus Rashford was good and now he's falling down, look at Harry Maguire and what crap he's had to deal with as well. There are many players that have come to this football club and completely the career's completely gone down the toilet. That is going to happen to a few more players, yeah. I think he's, Dan Ashworth and Mitchell have got a massive job in finding the right players, but making sure that Manchester United look like that promising that promising football club for young talent. Can you actually get into Manchester United's team? Can you prosper? Can you enhance your career by coming to Manchester United? Because I think players actually look at us now and go, yeah, it's the big name, it's the glitz and the glamour, and you usually get a decent wage, but am I actually going to be part of the project? Jean-Claude Tadebo Jean is a prime example of that and why he turned down Manchester United in the summer. He spoke openly to Le Keep about why he didn't move to Manchester United. He didn't go to United because he wasn't convinced of the project. That's not the first time we've heard that. We had a young English player who was just on the cusp of something special in Jude Bellingham walking around Carrington with Sir Alex Ferguson and Ed Woodward and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. They rolled out everyone for Bellingham, but he wasn't convinced by what he was looking at. He'd rather go to Dortmund. That was seen as the bet, the better choice for Bellingham. Yes, there were rumours about a clause that he had to play a certain amount of games and Dortmund promised him that. This, for me, is Manchester United's issue over the year. It isn't the fact that players don't know what United are, what they was. It's what they're going to be that I think is the problem. And that's what the likes of all of Ineos, not just Mitchell and Ashworth, if they do come in. Jean-Claude Blanc, Sir David Brailsford is going to play a massive, massive role in Manchester United going forward in making sure that he puts the people in place that will make Manchester United that promising promising prospect for a player to come in somewhere where they want to go. They can understand the project. They want to be part of it. They can see the vision of what the club is doing. That's what Manchester United need to get to. And it is just starting now. It's going to take a long, long time and there's going to be plenty of people saying this was a complete waste of time months, years down the line yet. We're going to be doing shows on air and people are going to be coming back and telling me, I told you that Radcliffe was never going to change anything. I told you that nothing was going to happen. Nothing's changed while the Glazers are there. All of this is what Manchester United are and it will never <clears throat> it will never change. Almost that, 500 likes as well, guys. Please give the video a like. We did, everyone in the chat right now just like the video. And I'm sure we'll get to the 500 mark instantly. We've had over a 1,000 votes on the poll, which was who will be at United longer, Ten Hag or Jadon Sancho? 76% think Ten Hag. I wonder if I did that poll again in another two months' time, if that would change. Sancho might be playing well in Dortmund. United's form might not have changed under Ten Hag. The Gla not the Glazers, Jesus Christ, don't swear. The... Ineos Sporting Control may be looking at Ten Hag in a completely different light and it could have changed everything. But I think we'll just end that poll there now. 76% uh, think Ten Hag will outlast Jadon Sancho at Manchester United. Let's not forget, Sancho has got a big, big contract. 500 likes in the bag, guys. Brilliant stuff. And we are only five subscribers away from 35k. So please, liking, sharing, everything... Just hitting that love heart button at the bottom and pressing little emojis. It all helps the channel. And yeah, we have done amazing over the Christmas period and December and it's carried on into January. I will just keep bringing you my honest thoughts on everything, giving my opinions and getting your thoughts on what I'm talking about and my opinion, guys. That's what this channel is all about. And we move forward stronger than ever on Forever United TV. I'm looking at today as a little bit more of a positive that's how I'm looking at it. That's what I'm taking away from today. This morning crippled me a bit. I don't want Muller. I don't want Dybala. I don't want Super Moteng. Werner, eh, I could see. There is uh, there is something in that there. I can see how it fits in. But at the end of the day, this finish here, the club backing the manager, big, big decision in from Ineos in getting behind Ten Hag with Jadon Sancho. That shows that they are willing to put the time and effort in 
to Eric Ten Hag. And now the pressure flips across to Ten Hag and what he can give Ineos. And I'll finish the video today by saying what I said earlier on. The one biggest thing out of everything, all discussions from Ineos, Sir David Brailsford, Sir Jim Radcliffe and Eric Ten Hag, the one big thing coming out of this and the most important thing will be what Ineos expect from Ten Hag this season. Because that will ultimately determine everything Manchester United moving forward, especially if Ten Hag is involved. He has to accept his role in the new setup and structure and he has to be able to work with it and get the best out of what he can on the pitch and that squad that we've got right now. Obviously, we're talking Sancho, we're talking uh, Scalvini as well, how we make that deal happen. And just as I say that, thank you very much. 35,000 subscribers just hit that mark now on the stream, everybody. 500 likes, over a 1,000 in the room with us on the chat tonight. Thank you so much. It has been an absolute roller coaster of a day. And there's more to come tomorrow, so make sure you tune in for that, everybody. But what a way to finish the stream tonight. Thank you so much, everybody. Again, as always, you've been immense. Keep your comments coming in when the video goes up on YouTube. Share the video, like the video. Most importantly, if you are tuning in forever to Forever United TV for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I will see you all in the morning. Thank you so much, everyone.